home birth, hospital birth, epidural or no epidural. What is the theme for the nursery? Are you gonna find out the gender? Do you already know the gender or are you gonna wait? Did any of your family members come out in the car on the side of the road? Because I've had family members have that happen too. There's like pages of stuff you have to do to get a wedding ready. Wait till you're ready to have a baby. Insane list. Now that we're pregnant, how many kids do you want? No plan. Cheering. Baby Bates' his gender. Very soon. Okay, guys. Do we want to tell him this is big? This is big. Welcome to the Baby Bates home for Q&A. Show them that bump. Here we go. It is legit. <laughs> the little kiddo is kicking the daylights out of Tiffany every night, but we're going to answer all of your questions shortly. You see bakery right here in the back because we are doing half-baked baby announcement photos with my wife. This is a Q&A. Don't worry, I just gotta show you these cute photos that she has set up here. We have the kitchen. It is literally so cool. I didn't even know half bake was a thing, but Tiff's telling me this is like a pregnancy thing that you're supposed to do. 20 weeks, show them what you got, Tiff. I totally made these guys. No, I didn't actually make these, I bought them. But they're like oatmeal chewy chocolate chip things. Um, they're really good and they are actually half baked. So we're going legit in these photos, guys. We do not falsify our half baked cookies. <laughs> okay, most importantly, hand me that board so I can show it to them without breaking oh, it. Guys, I, I already messed up once. It says half baked baby base. This was great. It was literally three bucks from Walmart. So if you need a letter board, three bucks from Walmart. There you go. Let's take some half-baked photos and answer your top baby Q&A questions because boy, did y'all bring it with the questions. Yes. Welcome to our very first pregnancy Q&A. We've never done one of these, and these are your questions that Tiffany has curated, went through, and picked the top ones that you had. We're gonna to try to answer as many as we can, as quick as we can, and hopefully we have yours on the list. Tiff, cue us for what is coming up. Yes, I'm so excited, as you can tell from my at home bakery, Baby Bates is right. halfway, and I'm Today. so excited. I know you Half guys. baked, it's official. I'm so excited. If you were pregnant or had friends, did they do a half baked pictures? If you go on our Instagrams, you can see the half baked pictures, and we'll share some here too. But um, we wanted to do the half baked and this pregnancy Q and A, considering we are past the first trimester. And like Lawson said, we've never done a pregnancy Q&A, so your questions are amazing. This is all the details and all the questions that you've been asking that will be answered. Question one, okay. Tiff, are you ready? We're gonna start out easy. Okay, um, start out easy, but boy did we get a lot, and these are deep too, so <laughs> we're gonna do our best. Now that we're pregnant, how many kids do you want? How many kids do I want? Yes. This is something that we discussed in depth when we met and every couple, every person that you're potentially dating, you should talk about that if it's starting to get serious. Yes, for so, those of you dating, talk about kids. Well, I'll wait till he's done, uh, I'm like ready to go for, I'm so to, excited. <laughs> to have list. the marriage counseling recap <laughs> no. for you guys. As far as how many kids I wanted, I grew up in a large family, you guys know that. Tiff grew up almost as an only child, she has an older brother that's a good age gap. And uh, we both love large families, though. So 
adoption was something that we both knew that we were going to do even before we met. It was something that God had put on our hearts individually. You guys know Tiffany's story. We did an adoption Q&A about that one time. So that was first off something that we knew was going to be uh, something that our spouse was comfortable and excited about. So adoption was one thing. And then uh, biological kids, of course, that's up to God. And we were very open to uh, what was going to happen. I thought maybe something small, like eight kids or something, 10 kids. Between five and 10 is what I envisioned and talked about. But, you know, those numbers could change. I think like for adopted, for bio kids, who knows what God's going to give us. But definitely small from my family standard and large for, I guess, the U.S. standard. This is our fourth Q&A we've ever done. We've done like a, a dating Q&A, a marriage Q&A, an adoption Q&A, and now a pregnancy Q&A. So when there's Q&A, guys, it's like Covering milestones. All the bases. <laughs> um, for me with kids, the age gap between my brother and me is the age gap between Jackson and Lawson. Oh boy, I'm older than I thought. And <laughs> Me and Jackson are homies. We're just like a year yeah, apart. Yeah, exactly. Um, kids, like we've expressed before, adoption, it's always been first even before we got pregnant. And um, we just trust God with kids and we love kids. And so whatever God has for us, I'm really open open to it. So how many, how many kids do y'all have? It's going to be a big party. Question two for Tiffany. Any cravings or aversions so far? It's really funny because I feel like I meet women who are either like, oh, I just had to eat like pickles and ketchup and like ice cream every day or they they cannot even eat. So for me, <laughs> I still haven't had a craving where I'm like, I have to eat this thing every day. Even through my first trimester, now in my second trimester, I know I just eat to eat for sustenance. Now there are things that I can eat that are a lot easier where my stomach's not feeling weird or I don't have to take a Tums or maybe it's just not something that doesn't taste right. So carbs are always really good. Fruit for me has been a big thing with for hydration. Tons of fruit. Antioxidants and an occasional Taco Bell, which is nice. Tacos, anything <laughs> carbs. I can do fries over like eggs and protein, which is probably not the way to go, but it's something that my body can, like my taste buds will accept. But yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get as many carbs into her as I can because her and baby need them. Question three. Have you had any morning sickness? How have you dealt with it if so? First trimester in December, I was on antibiotics for a week because of strep. Took a little break, thought, oh, this is, I'm done. Then I immediately got flu A, was on medication for that. I was Everything was not staying inside me at all. She's a trooper. I had to get IV, like IV for hydration, literally could not hold a sip of water down. Like it, it was I was tough. so nervous and thankfully we had really good friends who have been through that extreme, like for sure. Thankfully I am out of that. Um, I had like the pups rash. I was just dizzy. Like my heart was pounding all the time. And the biggest thing of course is I think the, nause the nausea and the growing up with that. Nothing really helped except the IV drips for hydration, um, which was really mm -hmm. a blessing. And so I know there's anti-nausea medication women take or my sister-in-law's take. I was hesitant to take it because I know you get constipated. Thankfully, that is the one symptom I have not gotten yet, but I know it will probably increase. I drink a lot of cranberry juice, guys. <laughs> so um, maybe that helps. So cranberry juice, uh, IV drips, and um, that's probably the main thing that helped. And then just lots of liquids, yeah, lots, lots of sleep. Liquid. And just having people reassure you like it's normal. So I'm thankful I didn't have it that extreme and it went away pretty quickly. But man, that was rough being sick on top of that. There's this one Instagram reel I have where I'm crying. And then our last YouTube where I think my teeth are gonna fall out, guys. Okay, I know my teeth are not gonna fall out. My mother in law obviously had 19 kids. <laughs> She has beautiful teeth. <laughs> but take but, your vitamins. Yes, it was a weak moment where I was just reading everything online. So tell me like what has been your emotional pregnancy, like moment. crazy moment that you've thought of. Um, although some people did comment that their teeth did fall out. So <laughs> anyway, what is your pregnancy like emotional state? <laughs> How far along are you? When is baby Bates due? Two questions, we can answer them both. First one, half baked. 
20 weeks. That's what TIFF is today. You can tell them when Baby Bates is due. Baby Bates is due at the end of July, like the later, later end of July, which is exciting because Blossom's birthday is July 27th. be a birthday buddy. Yes. And the due date that I am at the end of July is my brother's birthday. So I... I don't know, it's my first pregnancy, so I don't know if I'll come early, I don't know if we'll be on time, I don't know if it will be in August, baby. So I'm prepared in that third trimester to eat my dates, my raspberry leaf tea, do my curb walks, <laughs> like do everything for that. And that's a question for you guys too, as I'm going into my third trimester, what are things that you learned? I already have the raspberry leaf tea, dates, curb walking, and of course stretching. And um, yeah, lots of taking, stretching. Through this whole process, I'm taking prenatals, Mm -hmm. which I'm happy to know which prenatals did you take you always there's like I learned this too for women I'm sorry I'm going on but it's helpful every prenatal is different some don't have vitamin D so you have to take a separate for, limit for that so it's really just working with your doctor working with your body and seeing what you need to supplement your pregnancy <laughs> okay we're getting to the good ones the big ones the controversial ones the fun ones already this is the big one Lawson <laughs> how do we this is the hardest one how are you prepping Duke to not be an only child. Guys, I gotta admit it. Duke is a very spoiled puppy, even though he's three years old. So Mentally, <laughs> he acts like a child. He's very loved. He will run right in front of you, flop down on the ground, belly rub. Duke is already good around kids. He loves Zach and Whitney's kids, the kids at the big house, all the other kids that are local that come and visit him when he gets to go over there. And I think he's gonna do just fine. Uh, sometimes he does get a little grumpy, when the spotlight is off of him, but hey, he's gonna be okay. He'll have a good time and he is gonna love this kiddo. If you have animals or dogs, what are ways when you brought your baby home that you acclimated? That you acclimated your dog, that you acclimated making sure your dog wasn't sad because I see, I know it's really hard on the puppies because <laughs> there's no longer the attention on them. So, what are ways you acclimated your pets? I know for me, one big thing I saw was that if you take like a baby cloth and you kind of like like that the baby's been wrapped in and then you let the dog smell um, the baby wrap. That way scent. they get their scent. So when you bring the dog in, you know, of course we're gonna be holding the baby, but yeah, what are ways you acclimated your pets? Probably the number one question we got of everything out of the hundreds that you guys sent in, probably more than a thousand questions was, are you gonna find out the gender? Do you already know the gender or are you gonna wait till birth? Tip. Okay, guys. Do we want to tell them this is big? This is big. I do know the we gender. We both know the gender. I can't believe of it. Of this baby, we've already had the gender reveal. So we're going to share it with you. We're going to share it with you. His family knows. My family knows. My friends know. We haven't shared it yet, but we do know the gender of baby Bates. And we're going to share that. Very soon. Very soon. So Very I'm soon. So I'll tell you this. I was stunned. I was stunned. Tip was stunned. <laughs> Everybody was woohooing. It didn't register for a little bit. No, I was open you'll to my. See. I had a great. Okay, I'll give you guys a sneak peek of this. I was so excited to do this gender reveal. I knew um, it, that we wanted to do it. And I had a cowboy cowgirl versus thing. cowgirl theme. So I had little cowgirls, little cowboys, and it was so fun seeing all the grandkids. I was like, why not one of each? So yeah, we will see our cowgirl versus cowboy gender reveal coming soon. So we do know the gender, guys. Next question, where will you have the baby? Nashville, Knoxville, California, Arkansas, we've said a bunch of things. Tip, that's obviously up to you. So where are we having this baby? My preference <laughs> is in a great controlled environment and not on the side of the road. Are we but, having it at home? But <laughs> we're gonna have it here in Tennessee unless something happens and we happen to be somewhere else and the baby comes. That's then, not the plan. That's not the plan, uh -huh. but I feel like, you know, it says you start a plan and, and the, the Lord determines your steps. A man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Yes. And he's directing our steps to have this baby in a hospital. <laughs> yes, I so. accidentally just answered the next, next question. Home birth, hospital birth. There's like pages of stuff you have to do to get a wedding ready. Wait till you're ready to have a baby insane list that's what tiff's doing with this birth plan plan so she's got it down to a science tip fill them in on the birth plan 
How is this going to go? <laughs> How do you predict this to go? Oh, How yeah, is it a, really going to go? As a first time pregnancy versus all the other moms that there with kids, oh, I have ex everything's going to go exactly the way I want it. <laughs> of course, I have ideas of how I want this birth to go. Obviously, this is the first one, so we are hoping to have it in hospital. I honestly hope that my baby flies out so fast. I don't need, like I was joking, saying not on the side of the road. I don't care if we're all the way to the hospital and it flies out. I'd rather have that. I care. Than, that's a little. That's like, a little sketch. <laughs> my my cousins were born on the side of the road. Uh, did you guys? Did any of your <sighs> family members? come out in the car on the side of the road because I've had family members have that happen to. Of course, for me personally, every birth is so amazing. Like every woman who is literally pregnant and can, a baby comes out, C-section, epidural, um, in labor for five days even, or whatever it is, you're amazing. So whatever that looks like for you, that is amazing. For me, just being the first, um, I just want to be in a hospital just to monitor that and I'm sure second, third, you know, however many pregnancies um, God gives us, then we might switch it up just depending on this first experience, but for we'll me, see how it goes. in a hospital just so we can see health. And being adopted too, I don't really have a health background, so we don't She doesn't really know what her bio mother went through, yeah, so uh, we what the medical wanna... concerns were. Yeah. So we'll figure it out. Tiff, other big question, epidural or no epidural? Okay, I'm telling you, doing one you. or the other does not make you any more amazing or less amazing. Any topper or less top. Any topper or less top. Whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you feel like you need to have peace during that process. Yeah. That's what I've told Tiffany Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if I don't have it, I'll be happy. And if I ask for it, I'll be happy. So we're going <gasps> to... That's a for big a topic that I, I want to... <laughs> I want to try to like... I have so many friends now who literally have their baby in a tub in the middle of their living room. So if I can do that somehow with the strength and willpower, I, I would, but um, for this one, I probably will just get an epidural, but I don't know. We'll see. So we've heard how Tiffany's preparing for this baby. I know most of you guys want to know how I'm preparing. Well, I'm yes. trying to focus on my mental health, make sure my financials are in order, get my plan ready have my hat, boots, shirt right by the bed so if it happens in the night, I can jump up, hop out of there. There's a great Dick Van Dyke episode uh, preparing for the first child. That's of course, it's one. scripted, but if you're having a kid, go watch that classic TV show and just a lot of good comedy that's very relatable for first-time parents. So we're going to be watching all the first-time parenting clips to prepare, but you can only be so prepared. When it happens, it happens, and there's going to be things that you're like, I would have done that different, but hey, it's better to have a plan and miss it by a little than having no plan. That is true. Best parenting advice you've received? That is a big question because we have, We're such experts. <laughs> we have received so much advice. Somebody said, make sure that the people that you're taking advice from are people that you aspire to be like. So that helps filter a lot of the advice. And I have great parents, I have great family and friends who have been through a lot, have seen a lot. My parents were very good at making sure each of us children felt like there was just always great communication. They never dealt with us in anger. They were always just very involved. So I think the number one thing is being there for your kid, having that relationship, and then pointing them to faith, and not just through words. Show that in your lifestyle, here, how you carry yourself when you're upset, how you carry yourself through learning experiences. I don't know that there's one specific pinpoint that I can think of of the best advice, but being there, being present, and keeping a good, even temperament, and how you communicate, teach, and grow together. Very important. Tiff, why don't you give us the best advice you've heard? Um, I mean, I'm so great for my parents. I think it's the same what Lawson said is my parents were always there. They always just gave me the mindset that try everything. Like you're not pigeonholed to like do one thing in your life, which obviously you've well, seen. Learn as much as you can. Yeah, learn as much as you can. Like in Lawson's life, my life, we've done so many different things like with this medical and music and I've done a lot of different things too in addition to acting sure. um, with education and volunteering. Give the child an opportunity to just try all the things and all the talents that God's put in them 
And of course, number one is faith. That's yes. the best advice, I feel like. It's always be grounded in who you are in yeah. Christ. Be more proud of your kids for loving Jesus, I feel like, than anything else. Mm. Oh, and your dad gave this really good advice saying, like, make make your kids your hobby. Like, and it goes into, like, bringing... Your fun time. Don't let yeah. them be, like, a side trail for you. Yeah. Build that genuine relationship. That is something that they definitely did very well with each of his kids. And a lot of people are always like, how in the world did you have any relationship at all when they have so many kids? And I really think that in life, all of us prioritize what's important to us. Whether that be our faith, whether that be our money, whether that be our spouse, our kids. Uh, we create the totem pole of the value structure. And so make sure yours is based on something that means more than temporary. What is the theme for the nursery and are we going to do a video on that? <laughs> Definitely gonna do a video. We have the baby room. We've had it since the beginning already planned even before we knew we were gonna be expecting. Unfortunately, right now, it is my workout gym crash room. <laughs> Tiffany is not okay with that, but I am working on getting that fixed. We have 20 weeks. We don't have 20 weeks. We have maybe 15 weeks <laughs> to get that completely renovated done. As far as the theme, Tiff's going to enlighten you on that, but I'm probably going to grab a few of my brothers and tag team this thing to knock it out fast. I'm going to do as much as I can myself, but I know the timeline. There is a lot to be done and this baby is already halfway here. It's kicking Tiffany to death every single day, about to kick out of her stomach, I think. And, and we're just halfway there. What Lawson said, a question to you that you asked if I can feel the baby kick. I can't between the hours of 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Oh boy. <laughs> Did you guys, okay, questions for you again. I know this is our community, but I'm asking all the moms or, or friends, aunts, you know, anyone soon who's Soon to pregnant, be moms. Soon to be moms. Um, I have really bad insomnia. I stay up really late. and 4 and 5 a.m. sometimes. It's crazy. I don't drink caffeine during the day, but um, did your, my baby started kicking around 15 weeks very lightly so it was very early and if you it's a bait so it's a very active kid it's a bait and so it's constantly like, so did your kid kick a lot at night and did you have pregnancy and something so that's what i'm going through so with the nursery three different thoughts in my head one i can go super you know neutral super clean i can do like an adventure theme travel theme something super colorful i can do a total whatever that gender baby, baby that we're having, I can do it in that color. But for me, I'm like, well, if we have more than this one gender or if we have more than this, I don't want to make it too crazy because I want it to be easy to clean. What I've okay. noticed with a lot of people is their nurseries now, I feel like there's things going on. I don't know if it's just, I'm just like minimal, minimal. Tip's thing. big in the minimalistic. I'm trying, as you can tell, in my kitchen, but I don't want to clean it. Like, I feel like everything you accumulate, you have to clean. And my philosophy is like, if you have something in your home, you have to put energy towards maintaining that. And I feel like with babies and kids, they have their imagination. They'll have toys, but they don't need like a hundred toys. Like, they, we travel, we'll have adventures. So, Nursery theme, I don't know yet, but we will share that video when it comes. What is the name of the baby? Okay, we are 95% sure on the name, but we are not 100% sure. So <laughs> we're going to wait till we see it to uh, officially decide what the baby name is, but we have it very, very close. I just want to see the I'm space. sure on the baby name. I knew if this is what uh -uh. we had, then I was like, this is the name. Even if it came from adoption, it came from um, biological, Bio. I knew if this was the gender, this would be the name. So okay. Lawson is 95% sure. We're 95% sure. I'm 100% sure. Its last name is Bates. It is Baby <laughs> The name is Bates, Bates. guys. <laughs> the name of our baby mm -hmm. is Bates. Baby Bates. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to get pregnant after the miscarriage? Are you still grieving the loss? How did you know that you were emotionally and physically ready to get pregnant again? When we got pregnant the first time with baby Hope, we were stunned then. We weren't expecting it. You never know. Everybody just assumes you're going to get married. You're going to have a lot of kids. Everything's going to go perfect in life. But we don't always know God's plans. And if we did, 
it would probably mess us up even more because we wouldn't be able to handle it. That's why he tells us to live life daily, trusting him. Our faith is very strong and that's definitely what got us through, having a lot of uh, family and friends to support us through that. That's something I don't want anybody to ever have to go through. But there's been so many that have gone through it, have wisdom, have encouraged us through our loss. It's something that you never can prepare for. Just like this baby coming, uh, we couldn't have prepared for that. Just grateful that God got us through. Tiffany was absolutely a trooper and inspired me. I know inspired a lot of other people. A lot of you guys encouraged us, making the comments here on YouTube, on social media, just saying you're praying for us, thinking about us sharing your own stories, what you've been through. A lot of people go through pain and trauma like that, don't know how to process it, don't know uh, what's acceptable to grieve, and that's gonna be different for each of you. But for us, I know talking about it, when the time was right, definitely helped. When we did find out that we were expecting again, as you saw in the announcement video, stunned, because it was pretty quick. It was about two months after the miscarriage hope. We were ecstatic, but also nervous because you're thinking, what could go wrong? Is the same thing going to happen? Is this excitement just going to turn into pain again? And so we went to the hospital a lot quicker uh, because they put you in potentially high risk once you've had miscarriages or problems. And so that was helpful to just make sure that, hey, we're doing everything we need to. The numbers are looking good. The levels are right and we're going to take it easy and follow advice and leave the rest in God's hands because that's all you can do. Tiff's healthy right now with new baby. Everything's looking good. We're just trusting God and doing everything we know. I feel like, of course, when there's a loss, you always remember that and it's always in your heart. It didn't take away the joy from this pregnancy. Of course, there were nerves that came with it. I was very nervous, especially early on, which is why we waited a little bit, of course, to share um, publicly. I feel like you're never emotionally prepared for anything. <laughs> I feel like even getting married, you're not emotionally prepared. Graduating college, you know, going into high school, like dating for the first time, yeah. like your new job, like driving, like you're like, oh, all these things. And I think that's where you're just really like, okay, God, you know, I've I've trusted you and if I can trust you with my salvation, I can trust you with all the little things throughout my life. He cares about every detail and I feel like God is our ultimate comforter and because we went through that, you know, you have that ability to comfort others going through it. Always really sad to see that and there's a different level of compassion and sympathy that comes with sharing similar stories with that. So I feel like it's opened me up to a whole new group of people, which I know none of those group of people want to be in this group of people. Like, I don't want to any more people. I want to close that group of people. No more miscarriages. But um, I just feel like you're never fully prepared and God will just give you the tools as, as you go. What are some childhood memories and traditions that you want to implement into our family? Like, that's a question for me. Oh boy, that's a great question. We had so many great memories as kids, and that's always changing through each stage you're going through. Out playing ball in the yard, my dad teaching me how to hunt a deer, to skin it, teaching me how to... Uh, <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> teaching me how to fish, teaching me how to split wood and making things fun, competition, and just enjoyable. That's really what a great childhood is about. It's not about having a lot of money, but it's about having that great connection and growth with with your people making memories and learning together and just building that support system tiff how about you oh man um i love christmas tamales so i'll probably make christmas <laughs> tamales <laughs> really good tamales um i love christmas cards i feel like everything's around christmas but but lawson said just really making sure that i have activities planned i keep them busy i keep them happy and Good work ethic, yeah. passion for life, yeah. focus on loving others. A lot of RV questions. Are you keeping the RV? Are you taking the kiddo on the road? Yes and yes. We're keeping the RV and we're still traveling we America. The RV and the kid. And the world. So don't worry. Not changing anything except small adjustments for our travel lifestyle. You can give us tips 
for traveling with a small kiddo, but we're definitely going to be doing it, not slowing down. As a mom now who's pregnant, obviously you have to be worried about the mom, but the dad's health as well is a very big deal that I feel like isn't talked about as much. From your perspective, what are ways, better ways for wives to support their husbands during this pregnancy process of becoming a dad? And then also what are ways you feel like you as a husband can help support the wife, so vice versa? Huge question. First off, again, nobody's gonna have the perfect answer because your relationship dynamic is gonna be different than ours. I think that one thing that's been good for me as a husband learning to grow in is listening, not always giving solutions. Tiff can be halfway through a problem and my mind already has six different solutions. Most of you guys know that's not the best way to thrive in marriage communication. Guys and girls think so differently and sometimes they just want to vent or they just want to share about their day or their problem. So listen and try to ask, is this something that you're looking for advice on or are you just looking for an ear? And that will give you the go ahead on whether you need a solution or you just need to sit back and listen. Take it all in. I'm very even temperament. Everything's always the same. I analyze, I process. Tiff is not quite the same in how she handles that. So for me, that's one of the things. And then just being aware that she has a lot more needs and emotions and things that are changing in her body and in her life than she ever has before. With the pregnancy, she's literally growing a baby human. Nothing more magical and amazing than that. So just being aware of that, being sensitive to her feelings, her needs, and her wants. I think for guys, at least me, we're pretty simple. Something that I've been trying to get better at is making sure my diet is decent. Didn't grow up super healthy, but I was active enough for it to all be worked out. I'm trying to focus. I feel a lot better. I do a lot better when I've had my daily workout, get good cardio, and drink a lot of fluids. But other than that, that's about it. That's what keeps me going. Making sure I get my workout in and I'm a better man. My coffee and my workout, and then I'll try to be the best husband I can be. You raise it. I think for wives too, just having patience too, because your hormones are crazy and like literally you just, I don't know, this is Flare. just me. I get so like not self-controlled <laughs> as a pregnant. I'm being very honest. And so just it's one having, of the fruits of the spirit. Yes. Self-control. You mean that ladies, even if you're pregnant. So being patient with your husband, giving him time, like giving him time so he has to work out or he wants to like have time to just do things he wants to do. You know, little things, how you can help your husband as well. You'll know your spouse, but just keeping an encouragement and have a lot of patience and kindness as women because it's hard. It's hard for me. I'm going to be very honest I'm during pregnancy says I'm hurting all the time, but. <laughs> Patience for the both of us. Yes. That's the key to that. Thank you guys for joining us for this Q and A. We've had a blast reading your questions, getting all your advice, hearing your encouragement, criticisms, all of it. We're learning, we're growing <laughs> as a team, and we could not be more excited. We've got a lot coming up. We're sharing Baby Bates' gender very soon. We're gonna take you guys through the nursery baby room process, all of the house changes before they get here, and it's gonna be a blast. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of those announcements. Yes. And feel free to chime away in the comments on something we might have missed. We will probably do another Q&A right before birth when baby is even bigger. So get ready, it's gonna be fun. Yay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.